Now in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of employing my usual method of step back sweetening my wine when I'm ready to bottle, I'm going to use wine pasteurization. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now, after we have properly degassed our wine, if necessary, and have back sweetened your wine to your liking, now you want to fill your wine bottles just up to about where the neck starts. And the reason for that is that as your wine gets warm, it's going to start to expand. And since there's only one way for it to go, and that's out, you don't want that to happen. So just uh, just keep it a little low to about where the neck actually begins to, to start. And then you want to cover your wine bottles with an aluminum foil cap for two reasons. One, you want to keep anything from getting in your wine bottles. And two, as you're heating up your wine, some of your alcohol might start to evaporate, even though we're at a lower temperature than that for that to happen. Uh, any, any alcohol that does come out will condensate in the bottle and on the cap and basically fall back down. So you should be okay. So let me fill up this last bottle and we'll move on. Once you've placed your pressure cooker rack or whatever means that you plan on employing to keep your wine bottles off the bottom of the pot, go ahead and place your wine bottles in the pot. Once that's done, go ahead and Start filling your pot up. Now you don't have to fill the bottles, uh, fill the pot up so that the water covers the bottle. You just want to fill it up enough where it, the water is just not going to start bubbling or boiling out of the pot. Now, following that, the next thing you want to do is that you want to insert, preferably, an instant read thermometer. But if you don't have an instant read thermometer, <laughs> use what you got and go ahead and put that, place that into the center bottle where you'll get a more accurate reading. And from that point on, we want to. Turn on the stove. I mean, you don't have to put it on high, just, you know, just medium high should do it. And what we want to do is that we want to bring the temperature up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's 74 degrees Celsius for you other guys, for at least 15 seconds. Now, you can do this at a lower temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Celsius, but that requires 30 minutes of... Uh, of boiling to make sure that uh, all of the harmful bacteria and germs and yeast have been killed off successfully. So for us, 165 degrees, 15 seconds is what we're going to use. Now, if you're concerned about your alcohol in your wine <laughs> boiling away, uh, alcohol evaporates at 172 degrees, well, 172.4 degrees or 78 degrees Celsius. Uh, temperature for that to occur because we're somewhat lower than that, uh, the caps on the bottles, the aluminum caps on the bottles, will ensure that uh, anything that does evaporate will condensate either on the neck of the bottle or on the caps and will basically just uh, trickle back down into the wine. So let's get this thing up to a boil. All right, now that our temperature has come up, we can go ahead and turn off the heat and using suitable protection, we want to begin to remove our bottles being very careful 
and we want to let these cool down to room temperature. Being very careful. All right, there we go. That part of the process is complete. When your wine bottles have come down to room temperature, all that you really need to do following that is to cork. If you want to dress it up, you can cap, label it, put it in your wine cellar, and when you're ready to enjoy, enjoy. Again, uh, without using sulfites, you can pasteurize your wine to stop yeast from re-fermenting. You can kill off most of your harmful bacteria. The only thing that uh, this method will not do is that it will not stop possible oxidation of your wine that might occur over time. But since this wine is going to be drunk young, that should not really be a problem. If you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Donations are always acceptable to the channel's PayPal account. Memberships are always a good way to help support this channel. And any of the follow-up steps you can find in my channel's playlist under winemaking operations. And I'll see you at the next video.